Arsenal nil. There was quite a surprising turn of events in the World Rapid Championship across two key games. Uh, so the first key game was Sergei Karakin against Ivanchuk. So this is on the 8th of July. Sergei playing white kicked off with e4. Uh, at the end of the game, you, you'll realise uh, the, the particular interesting point and an indication for another game, which I want to do for another video. So uh, Imanchuk, you know, a tough cookie, two seven six nine. So a two seven seven nine. So ten points in their rating, their feeder rating. Uh, but this is rapid, so um, okay. Uh, so it's fifteen minutes each with ten second increments. So we get here after Bishop B five, we get D six from Vasily, which actually is is kind of a transpositional tool almost to a, a King's Engine style position. Well, that's how it's going to turn out in this game. After White Castle, Bishop D seven, we see C three. After A six, we see uh, Bishop going to A four, and now G six. So, in the King's Engine, you'd fin chateau. But usually, you know, White's occupying the center like this and having a pawn on d5. But um, the way the game goes, it starts to look like a King's Engine defense because White, in this position, plays d5. Okay, this bishop is not usually on a4 though. It's usually, say, um, on e2, and the knight's protecting e4. Uh, so some some differences, but the structure. Uh, looks familiar. So bishop g4 here from Ivanchuk. After h3, he doesn't want to give up his light square bishop. He puts it all the way back. And we get the sort of bayonet attack style b4. So this is the familiar King's Engine defense uh, structure, which can be undermined, you know, with, with c5 soon. So black plays knight h5. Okay. But unlike in King's Engine positions, you know, bishop e2. You know, would, would pose a threat to that knight immediately. Would move like knight g5. It's not here. It's stuck over there. Bishop d2 and now a5. Okay, a3, king h8, and now both sides attack each other's pawn chains. So c5 attacking that exploitable base of the chain, and now black reacts with f5. Okay, and white takes now on f5. Which is setting up a loose knight, really. If g takes, then maybe knight takes e5, hitting that loose knight. Black takes with the knight, he's okay taking with the knight. Although white does have the e4 square, there's, there's some compensation here. Like uh, black can try and extend the scope of his bishop, just plonk a knight on d4 soon. Knight e4, a takes, a takes. Actually, instead of knight d4, knight f4. Bearing down on White's king side, and if ever bishop takes, then this bishop is extended in scope across the whole diagonal. And White takes that anyway, and plays rook c1. It's not the end of the world. Okay. The queen's still protecting uh, the bishop, which is still eyeing across this diagonal. Knight to h4, and now we see knight e g5, which looked quite a menace actually for the knight coming to e6. But Black takes on f3, bringing that knight back, and now plays bishop f5. So Vashley's uh, got uh, an interesting position here with the black pieces. I think he's at least uh, equal, though White has this dangerous kind of space advantage. These pawns in the end game could be dangerous for creating a pass pawn. Bishop c2, bishop d7, and bishop goes to e4, and it looks okay, it looks comfortable for White. And a curious move actually, bishop a4 just hitting the queen, but what is the bishop really doing there? Queen d3 at least stops any cheekiness with that bishop, like bishop b3 later. Queen f6, and then we see h4 as though, okay, is Sergei really going to try and weaken Vasily Mitchell's king, or is the, is the pawn just actually just supporting knight g5 again for knight e6? After bishop d7, actually. It's revealed. Knight g5. Okay, rook a e8, covering that e6 square even more. But now white plays c6, and these pawns look quite dangerously advanced. After takes takes bishop c8. Now we see b5, as though you know maybe in the future b6 will be useful. 
try and get uh, this pawn going maybe. Black now evicts the knight on g5 and now gains a, a bit more territory g5 as though maybe even g4 exerting more pressure across these dark squares if this knight's this large for control of f control controlling from f3 e5 and d4. So you know it looks as though is white going passive here? Well he takes on g5 and plays actually queen d5. Okay. Now after g4, check bishop h6. Knight h4, the knight is refusing to go backwards, it's going forwards and threatening a very dangerous knight g6 to win the exchange. The king just moves though to g7 here. Bishop d3, one pair of rooks come off. And now g3, it's really, it looks as though white's on the back foot here. Now black's doing the, the real running here. Uh, so knight f3 protecting the d4 square because maybe takes and queen d4 is getting dangerous. Rook h8, queen d5. Okay, bishop g4. And now white plays queen e4, which seems to imply queen e7 might be on the cards. But uh, black takes on f3 and plays bishop g5. And this kind of has a, a dangerous idea, perhaps, like this, uh, to attack. Rook b1. Okay, so in this position, with the rook on b1, it's protected by the bishop, actually. And so if black dared to play queen h6, then maybe fg is possible. And using that f2 square. In fact, in the game, queen d4 was played. Let's just quickly check this out to make sure it's absolutely harmless. Queen h6 is actually an advantage for black. After queen d4, it seems black lost a bit of advantage. So maybe it's not so harmless. Takes, check. In this position, f takes. And the king's getting a bit in trouble. If queen takes, there's bishop. No, there isn't bishop h4, but there's rook f8. And here it gets a bit tricky, doesn't it, for white? It's starting to look a bit tricky, especially after rook e3. White would have to give up the queen for two pieces. It doesn't look very healthy. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so that's, that's a bit far from the game. So in the game, I don't know if, if Vasily missed messed that up. From an engine point of view it looks as though queen h6 is strong here or even even g takes f okay but we're, we're venturing off here. So in the game he played queen d4 which also has very unpleasant threats like takes queen takes and rook h1 to decoy the, the king away from the queen and you take on f2. Rook f1 going on the defensive and now King F six. Okay. So the rook is ready to support the queen if it takes queen takes. There's no rook h one. So did did black miss a major opportunity? Now with king f six, what what is going on? He can't double so easily on the h file. Queen e four, and now the queen's come off. So yeah, there was a there was a moment there. He had a golden opportunity perhaps according to engines for for quite a an advantage, but it's gone now. King e5, but has he got an endgame advantage? Opposite colour bishop endgame here. Okay, protecting this pawn, blockade on the dark squares, bringing up his passed pawn. Rook b8, rook a3, bishop e7. And again, it looks really as though white is uncomfortable here, because black will be having this bishop pressed down on these dark squares, particularly f2. It looks pretty nasty. Bishop b4. The rook is persisting to control c5 here. Doesn't want that bishop c5 happening. King d6 supporting bishop c5 though. Takes. Check. Now rook h8. Very dangerous threat all of a sudden. Temporarily a pawn down though. White simply plays the cold blooded king e1. Check. And now the cold blooded bishop f1. Of course not king d2. That would walk into bishop e3. Ouch. <laughs> so bishop f1, fg. But seriously, has, has Ivanchuk blown his advantage now? Let's get an engine evaluation. Even though 
Okay, black's pressing on the dark squares. It's small. The advantage is small, I think, from what could have occurred earlier. Maybe he missed that, that key opportunity. So king e2, bishop f2, king f3, rook h8, bishop d3. It's like white's, uh, white's holding on here. Okay, rook e3 is under pressure, bishop f1, rook b3, king f5, rook b4 now. So is black's d pawn a source of advantage? If this pawn can be locked down, which it is being, can this pawn be pushed? Rook c3, rook e4, as though actually rook e1 could be a bit of a menace as well. Rook c1, bishop e3, rook d1, check. And now king c5, and it looks as though, actually, okay, is the black king more aggressive here? King h5, rook f2. King g4, now bishop f4 holding that g3 pawn, rook b1, king b6, and now some shuffling again, bishop d6, the rook can't move off because it's protecting the bishop on f1. Now the king comes back on another tour, d4, and it looks as though, is the king going to try and herd that pawn down? King b4, rook d1, okay, and this is a bit tricky actually. In in this position, um, Ibnchuk, he forgot about his clock. He actually forfeited on time. I wonder what sort of possibilities he he was thinking about. Um, so seventy on move seventy five rook d one he forfeited on time. Let's add a bit, sir. He's a bit better. If anyone's better, it's black. But um. If we, if we try uh, for something interesting, like um, for example, king king c three, then then white can just kick that king. Okay. And say we get this position, white can actually play rook takes d six here, a, a, a bishop sack, because in this position there's rook takes d six, and these pawns would. Would would give white an advantage, and this this would be decisive advantage immediately. These pawns, so so maybe you know that's one variation for trying to do something with with the black king here. Uh, if he was thinking about that, you know, just 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 this idea, because otherwise, you know, this this is potentially dangerous um, in this position. You know, say white, you know, plays plays this, um, then maybe this this pawn. Is um is coming down now, you know, d three, d two is is gonna win that uh, bishop and you know black should be better there, much better. Okay, so maybe he was like thinking of stuff like that for the king c three and, and d three ideas. Um Okay. So he forfeited on time in this tricky position. Uh let's let's really um let, let's go back and have a quick overview and go to the critical position where I thought Black may have blown it. Um, let's, let's actually get the engine view for the game. I think it was about equal most of the game. Until that, that point with the H file incident. So white was slightly better here. Okay. Nothing much to write home about, even though the knight on e4 is a bit, a bit of a beauty. But the black bishop's also a bit of a beauty. Okay, we're about equal here, and we come up to that moment that I mentioned soon. Uh, so white's got that space for advantage, but black's also getting a space for advantage now on the king side, and it's here I think that. Um, off the g3, knight f3, rook h8. It's here soon. Bishop g4, queen e4, maybe a slight mistake. b6, apparently, it's better to try and break through with c7 here and then queen c6. Okay, so after this queen e4, okay, in this position, bishop g5, there's a dangerous h file. And here, this is the point where it could have been about plus three for black with queen h8. 
h6. It looks cheap, queen h6. It does. It looks as though the sort of move I've been playing in chess cube war zones. Queen h6, just make it on h1. And it's probably ruled out because isn't isn't this move clever? Because it protects the rook, uh, moving laterally, and so and then you can play fg and play king f2. But actually, it's not that clever because, as you can see, uh, it doesn't matter about the king coming to f2. There's a check here. So after queen takes g3, this other check and the the black checks keep up here. Maybe this is not the most incisive, actually. Let's check here. Okay, rook f8. Is there something even better than fe, fg? Okay, it looks as though it's come down to like a minus one, actually, uh, which is surprising because you'd think, okay, if white's forced to sacrifice a queen here. Isn't that going to be better for black? But maybe it's these pawns are quite dynamic for b6. So white's got a kind of fortress position, which could be a very difficult not to crack. So probably, maybe white can hold it uh, for a while longer anyway. <laughs> a long while longer. Okay, with, with best play. Okay, so. Even shoots, he's, he goes in for that ending, and, I'm f and luckily for Sergei, this is a bit of luck, really. Can we call it luck? Even shoot forgot about the clock and lost on time. So, okay, we get we get this like tense position where the king was coming back on the way back, and after se move seventy five rook d one, even shoot forfeited on time, and okay. So you might think Inventory was really, really annoyed by this, losing on time in a better position. And he had a great game all the way through basically. Um Okay, but and and then and he would have play now Magnus Colson in the next game. And I hope to do the video annotation of that game. So Ivanchuk against Magnus Colson. Okay, comments or questions on this video and this part of the story so far. Thanks very much.